Hello, this is Anna, the Pretty Shepherd, and today I am here as I attempt to reach peak Christmas. Besides being the Christmas special, this video is also, incidentally, the start of a new series called Tales That My Grandfather Told Me, or How I Remember Them. I've actually mentioned my grandfather on this channel before and I've told you how I had a very close and special connection with him. Now, I have to tell you, he was basically my gateway into folk culture. He grew up in a small Transylvanian village in the early 20th century, back when folk culture wasn't just alive and well, it was actually a part of everyday life. And he used to tell me these stories about his childhood, as well as just folk tales in general and just sing me folk songs. So he was really... He, he really had a knack for storytelling. And I guess in this regard, the way that I put myself out on YouTube kind of means that I took after him, which is a nice little thought to have. <laughs> So today I wanted to share one of his stories from around Christmas time when he was a child. But for that I will have to set the scene a little bit. I wanted to tell you a few general things about what celebrating Christmas was like in this time in a Transylvanian village. And in light of today's story I want to focus on Christmas trees and decorating them. So decorating a Christmas tree, as some of you may know, is a tradition that comes from Germany. The first written record of a Christmas tree being decorated in Hungary was uh, in 1825 and it will come as no surprise to anyone that it was first done by German minorities living in Hungary at the time. At first, it was a tradition of the bourgeois, so you would come by Christmas trees in the parlors of well-off families in the city. But as this tradition grew in popularity, village people also adopted it. In many village households, so peasants' houses, they wouldn't actually have a full-blown Christmas tree, but rather a single branch from a pine tree, which they would decorate and hang from the main beam of the house. And even if they did have a Christmas tree, which is the case of my grandfather's childhood home, it would still be a pretty small one. Traditional decorations for a Christmas tree would include fruits, like small apples, nuts, for instance walnuts, uh, paper cutouts, or other delicious small treats, such as gingerbread, for instance. And if you're looking for a good gingerbread recipe, I have a pretty neat little stop-motion video of it if you want to check it out. But there is one very special treat which became popular in the late 1800s, Salon Zucker, which literally translates to Salon Sugar or Parlor Candy. Now the origin of this Christmas candy, which nowadays is considered something typically Hungarian, is surprisingly French. The recipe for these fondant candies first appeared in 14th century France and then it appeared in Berlin, Germany as well, in the 17th century. It was only a matter of time that the before-mentioned German minorities living in Hungary would adapt their own little traditional treats. So by the 19th century they were manufactured even in Hungary. Interestingly enough, Germany, France or any other European country doesn't really have these Christmas candies anymore. It's considered a typical and traditional Hungarian treat. So what are these Hungarian parlor candies? The original recipe that can be traced back to France is actually for fondant candies. But along the years there have been a variety of new recipes and flavors that were created. Nowadays they look a lot more like chocolate bonbons rather than candy or sugar as the name would suggest. But you can ask any Hungarian and they will tell you that the filling, the inside is not really what matters, it's the outside that counts. This came out wrong. Please don't quote me on this. <laughs> anyway, the wrapping of these candies is very particular. They are wrapped in a piece of tissue paper and then a smaller piece of aluminum foil. And then the ends of the tissue paper are cut to create a fringe. 
So putting it into words like that seems kind of silly. Uh, it seems like it's just a piece of candy wrapped in paper and foil, but it's really something festive to us. Now, as I've already mentioned, Salon Zucker was already being manufactured by elite confectioners in the late 19th century. They grew so much in popularity that they actually became a very much sought after Christmas treat. And around the turn of the century, industrialized factories took over, as with pretty much every area. These factory-made candies weren't quite so popular at first, but their affordable prices and the steady rise in quality and variety, both in terms of taste as well as packaging, gradually convinced the buyers. However, with the economic difficulties that the two world wars brought, most of these factories had to shut down for good. So what did families do around Christmas time? If they had the means, they made the candies themselves. Now keep in mind that in the case of my grandfather, it's communist Romania that we are talking about. So all sorts of resources are low. People usually saved their flour and sugar all throughout the year just to have enough for the Christmas baking in December. And in the case of these candies, even tin foil was being saved up for months. Or neatly straightened out and stored away from one Christmas to the next so people would be able to package their new little candies and hang them from the tree. Um, actually, people even did this before World War I because some of those manufactured candies had such beautiful wrappers that they would save them from one year to the next and just make their own candy and still package it in the manufacturer's packaging. Yeah. Okay, okay, that was enough nerding out about parlor candy. Let's just see about that story, shall we? Once upon a time, in a small Transylvanian village, Christmas had just arrived and my grandfather and his older brother were very excited to finally see the Christmas tree. The Christmas tree was, of course, always brought by an angel. And my grandfather's mother warned him, as she did every year, not to dare look at the angel because he would turn to stone if he did. Gentle bells were ringing on the outside porch and that was a sign that the angel was approaching. So their mother rushed them to go quickly and hide under the table. And it's not very difficult to imagine in this situation how the curiosity of a little child can reach fever pitch. He knew he wasn't supposed to look, and he didn't want to, really. Only to take the smallest of peaks. He saw the angel's slippers. The very same as the neighbor girls. <gasps> and as a child, my takeaway from his story was, hmm, I guess angels have to get their shoes from somewhere. How neat it is to have the same kind of shoe as an angel. Pretty cool. Because Christmas angels are absolutely real, of course. I hope you've enjoyed this little story that I've shared with you. And please, if you have any sort of Christmas stories, be it from grandparents, parents, or your own experience, you know, those sort of warm and fuzzy Christmas stories or just funny ones that you think back fondly to, please share them in the comments because I love reading them so much and it would be a wonderful way for all of us to connect over this heartwarming holiday. Also, if you decide to add some traditional decorations to your Christmas tree this year and say you post it on Instagram, please tag me in the picture. I would love to see everybody's wonderful Christmas tree especially if you decide to make your own parlor candy for it. 
And with that, I will end this video. Thank you so much for watching. Do let me know if you've enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments. And have a blessed Christmas. Have a wonderful winter season. And bye-bye! <laughs>